999. Oh. Oh, a thousand. Tell you what, one thing that I really like about this social isolation and distancing thing is that I get to work out in peace. Normally, my personal trainer would be here. His name is Chad. And Chad would be uh, making me do things his way, perhaps. So one thing that Chad really believes in for maximum muscle gain is that you need to do all of your curling in the squat rack. Uh, me, personally, I like to do my squatting in the squat rack and my curling anywhere else, just not in the squat rack. Another thing is that Chad and I have uh, slightly different uh, ideas about what the minimum and maximum of exercises we should do are. So Chad, if he were here, firmly would believe that I needed to do a thousand and one curls for maximum muscle growth. But guess what? It's not up to Chad. It's up to me now. So I just stopped at a thousand. Chad and I have different ideas about things. I'm also going to squat, whereas someone of Chad's nature may choose to do a lot of bicep curls. Again, why he would have had me do over a thousand instead of just stopping. So very much is the same thing when we get into linear programming. There could be times where reality would dictate that you need to make something because these linear programming problems, when they get solved, may actually indicate that you shouldn't do something. Maybe it's a certain product that it would say you shouldn't make any of because it just doesn't make sense. It's not profitable. And if you would actually work out, out by hand, you would see that there is no way you would ever make that. Okay. So if you see some of these surprising things come up in your linear programming problems, don't necessarily be surprised. But there are times where you will want to do something to counter that. So for instance, if you have a product and you really want to make at least some of them and guarantee that some of, uh, that some of those things are made, then you can impose some kind of bound on your solution. And a bound is just another constraint. It's another form of constraint, but it's a very specific one where we would say that we have to make at least this much of a product right? Or that we cannot make more. That's the max that we can make. So you can already see that those are pretty much like constraints. They're just going to behave a little bit differently. So let me show you how one of these would work. Let me, uh, because it's always handy, I always bring my computer into the gym. Not only do I always bring my computer, but I always have R up and ready to go. So let me share up my R session with you. And what we're gonna see here is a problem that we've already seen in the past. And I'll let me uh, zoom this in a little bit so it's a little bit easier for everyone at home to see, just in case you really wanna see it, really get your eyeballs on it. So this is the same kind of stuff that we've had before with the ad buying example. All right, we have our shows that we want to buy ads on. Uh, we have our demographic groups that we have to have a certain number of, of exposures for each of these demographic groups. And we have the prices for each of these shows. Great, Again, nothing too, uh, too different for anything that, we haven't, that we've seen already. If you've followed through any of the notes, this example should be pretty familiar to you. And let's go ahead and we're gonna run these things. So we'll run our constraints our model, we'll solve the model, and look at our objective value, right? That 5,062 and 50 cents, great. Let's look at our solution. So our solution again was to purchase 30 ads for Glee and seven and a half ads for NCIS. But my trainer, Chad, I may have mentioned him before, he absolutely loves the Big Bang Theory loves it. Uh, every time the audience laughs, he laughs right along. It's really cute to watch. Not only does he laugh, he just loves Sheldon, thinks he's, he's just so quirky and funny. So he really is into that. So for the sake of him, I want to make sure that we can purchase some ads for that particular show. So here's what we're going to do it. We're going to use a function called V underscore bound. You may guess what that means. It's for variable bounds. And here's how it works. Because it looks a little bit weird the first time you see it because there's these abbreviations, LI and UI. That is the lower index and upper index. So remember that we have nine objective variables in this particular problem for our nine shows. So here we're gonna have one through nine for our lower index, one through nine for the upper index. Well, for the lower bounds, here's what we wanna set. 
LB is a lower bound, again, like a, uh, as you may have intuited, we're going to have at the end a vector of nine numbers. The first number corresponds to the first variable that goes into our problem. And the very first variable, if we go all the way back up to here, is the Big Bang Theory. So that Big Bang Theory is the first variable, and the first variable we want to set a lower bound of zero, or a 10 on that, excuse me, 10, not zero. Zero is everything else, but 10 for Big Bang Theory. So that is going to ensure that we have at least 10 as a solution for the Big Bang Theory. Rep zero and eight means we're going to replicate zero eight more times. So that means the lower bound for everything else is going to be a zero. Let's go ahead and take a look at this upper bound here. So for the upper bound, right now we want to keep everything as just infinite, right? That's what this inf means. So we're going to replicate infinite nine times. Again, that nine is going to correspond to the number of things, of variables that we have in our model. So let's go ahead and run this variable bound line here. We'll run that. We'll run our model again. And the only thing that's going to change is we're going to put this argument in called bounds. You see it right here, bounds. And we're going to set that equal to variable bounds, this B bound that we created up here model. Great. Oh, now's the big one. We're going to solve it. We're going to get our solution. And you can see that our minimum value, right? Our goal here is to minimize this, uh, to minimize our ad expenditure. It went way up. It went up quite a bit. Well, we've imposed this additional constraint on this model. And this additional constraint is that we have to have at least 10 ads purchased for the Big Bang Theory. All right, and we're always trying to help our friend chat out. So that's great, but let's make sure that that actually worked. So let's look at our solution line here, and what do we get? We get 10 ads for the Big Bang Theory. You can see Glee's dropped down a little bit. NCIS has actually went up from where it was before. To satisfy the rest of our equation, right, our constraints, that needed to happen. So you can see that this ROI package made putting these variable bounds in there much easier than it would have been to mess around with uh, getting all of these constraints put in by themselves. If you did that all by hand, it would take you a lot more time than just simply doing this V bound stuff. So the next time you are running into a, pro a linear programming problem and you know that you have to do something with it, whatever it is, whatever it may be, but you know that you want to cap something, whether it's a lower cap or an upper cap, that you have to have something, but maybe not so much, then that's where you can use VBound to really uh, exercise some more power with your particular problem. So I wish you good Chad free lifting, and I hope you enjoy all of your time that you have to program. See you next time. <laughs>